Hello, my fellow hunters. So this is my new monster list that has been in the works for a very long time. My top 10 monsters from Sunbreak. So let's jump in and start with number 10. Great Roggy, first introduced in Monster Portable 3rd. My third favourite bird wyvern in the series. Great Roggy is my favourite raptor in the series. Great Roggy's design is quite unique compared to the rest of the raptors in the series. Mainly because he has a poison sack. Out of all the raptors in the series, Great Roggy is one that stands out the most. In Sunbreak I started to appreciate him more because he is quite the fun fight when he's afflicted. Great Roggy is a monster that I speedrun often when it comes to anomaly investigations. His moveset is very basic but when you start fighting him at level 80 or higher in the anomaly investigations his attacks become very deadly that is most likely going to cut you he is quite difficult especially at level 100 so if you're planning to fight afflicted great ruggy just make sure to take some antidotes with you or you'll regret it overall i really like great ruggy i like his design and also his ecology but i enjoy his fight a lot more in some break than I did in Base Rise. His afflicted form is easily one of my favourites. And also, I was quite glad that they reintroduced some of the old game raptors that have not been seen in a very long time. Great Ruggy included. So, Great Ruggy is number 10. And now, let's move on to number 9. Silver Raphalos First introduced in Monsanto G, the first rare species introduced to the series alongside Gold Raffian. Silver Raphalos and Gold Raffian are staple monsters that are usually in every single G rank expansion. Gold and Silver were added to Sunbreak in the first update and the Silver Raffalos is my favourite out of the pair. I first fought Silver Raffalos in Monster 4 Ultimate and then I fought him in Iceborne and also Generations Ultimate. And now Sunbreak. But Sunbreak's version of Silver Raffalos is very different, more different from the one in Iceborne. Silver Raffalos in Sunbreak is way more aggressive. He spends more time on the ground and more in your face. This version of Silver Raffalos has borrowed some attacks from Dread King Raffalos and also Apex Raffalos, which makes the fight more fun and also more intense. Also, Silver Raffalos has got one of the best armor sets in Sunbreak right now, thanks to a skill called Element Exploit. Element Exploit is like Winner's Exploit but for elemental damage. You do more elemental damage on weak points, which is quite huge for weapons such as switch axe, dual blades and charge blade. Which is quite good because in some break, element is broken. In base rise, element was not as strong as it is now. So I'm kind of glad that they fixed it. 
and also introduced a skill that boosts it thanks to Silver Rathalos. Also, Silver Rathalos weapons are really strong. Most of them have got a lot of white sharpness and also very good element. So, if you're looking for a good fire weapon, Silver Rathalos is a good option. And I gotta say, I really like Silver Rathalos in Sunbreak. He is way more aggressive this time around. And he is hands down one of the most fun fights so far. Overall, Silver Rathalos is one of my favourite monsters from Sunbreak. I also love this colour scheme. Since silver is one of my favourite colours, it just makes me like silver a lot more. And also, he is a staple rare species that's in every single G rank expansion of any game. So, I was glad that he came back in the first update. And on that note, we will move on to number 8. Scorned Magna Marlo. A brand new variant of Magna Marlo and the final monster you can unlock when reaching Master Rank 100. Similar to Runo Nagagante from Iceborne, which is also unlocked at Master Rank 100. Scorned Magna Marlo is quite different to regular Magna Marlo. Scorned Magna Marlo's blades are way larger than normal and also sharper and he is also missing an eye. It is also implied that this Magna Marlo is the same Magna Marlo that you defeated in the story of Base Rise which means this Magna Marlo will have a hatred for you similar to that of Shagu Magala. Scorned Magna Marlo is a battle hardened variant that has survived battle after battle with hunters and also monsters. Since it is a Magna Marlo that has survived all these battles, he has developed some new attacks and also a new state. Also, at some point in the fight with Scorned Magna Marlo, eventually he will go into his new enraged state. When he starts to transform into this state, he will unleash a blast of dragon energy, which can give you dragon blight. While he is in this state, he becomes way more faster and his arm blades extend out, which makes him more dangerous. Scorned Magna Marlo's moveset is similar to regular Magna Marlo except he's got a large range of new moves. He has got a lot of new AoE attacks, along with a combo attack, a tail slam that also shoots out hellfire. Also, Scorn Magna Marlo, of course, has got his own armor set and weapons. His armor set is not too bad, I guess, but it is good for Laird. However, his weapons are amazing. They all have purple sharpness and they all have blast and they are considered one of the best blast weapons in the game right now and they all look amazing. Overall, I love Scorned Magna Marlo. He is just a badass variant and he improves a lot over the regular Magna Marlo and I hope Scorned stays around and hopefully makes his way into another game. And so with that, let's move on to number seven. Gore Magala. 
the flagship of Monster Hunter 4. He has now returned in Sunbreak. He was also in my last previous monster list. In my previous monster list, I wanted Gormagala to return for a future game. And I got my wish. Gormagala is just as fun as ever. In some break, he is slightly harder. But at the same time, he feels very similar to his Generations Ultimate version. At this point in the series, every newcomer that has come from Iceborne or from Rise should know what Gormagala does. He is the progenitor of the Frenzy Virus, which had an amazing story behind it in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Gormagala is still one of my all time favourite monsters and his design has always been very cool and also when he's in a frenzy state he looks really badass. Gormagala's amazing looking weapons also return. I really love his charge blade and his long sword and also his switch axe. Gormagala is not a traditional elder dragon he is actually a juvenile, so you can use traps on him. But over time, when Gormagala consumes enough food, he will start to molt into his adult form. Shagaru Magala, a powerful elder dragon, one of the best fights in Sunbreak and also in the Monster Hunter series. Shagaru Magala uses the same skeleton as Nergigante from Monster Hunter World. His fight can be very brutal. Shagaru Magala's armor is very good this time around. The armor offers a skill called Bloodlust, which is essentially the Frenzy Virus skill. The skill infects you with the Frenzy Virus, and after you recover from it, you get an infinity increase by 20%, which is quite insane. And you also recover health that you lost when you're infected, making Bloodlust one of the most powerful skills for crit engine weapons, such as dual blades, switch axe, and many other weapons. Overall, I really love Shagru Magala. He is hands down one of my most favorite Elder Dragons in the series and I'm glad that he made his return and I hope one day in a future update we can get his variant Chaotic Gore which is a monster that a lot of people want to return and on that note let's move on to number six Serigios, the flagship of War Ultimate, has finally returned in Sunbreak and he has hands down one of the best fights in Sunbreak. Serigios is on many of my monster lists and he is also one of the monsters for I wanted to return for a future game. And he is now in Sunbreak. Serigios is a unique flying wyvern that can dislaunch razor shop scales from its body and it can also cause bleed. He is the first monster in the series to introduce the bleed status. So Regus's armor and weapons also return, but unfortunately they are not as good as they were in previous games, which is a big letdown. The new thing about Regus's equipment is that it got a new armor skill which is essentially the old skill for the older games where your weapons can shop themselves the skill itself is okay which is unfortunate but the upside to Seregios is that he is an amazing monster when it comes to his inflicted form Seregios has also got a new pin as you've seen from the trailers of course but overall Seregios is just an awesome monster. I love his design and also love his colour scheme. And like I said earlier, 
he is just an amazing fight. He is really aggressive, especially in his afflicted form. And I'm quite glad that he returned, because he is such an awesome monster. And so, let's move on to number 5. Goss Harag, my second favourite fanged beast in the series and the apex predator of the Frost Islands. Goss Harag was on my previous monster list and he was my most favourite monster from Rise but he's now been replaced with other monsters. But I really love Goss Harag in Sunbreak. His fight in Sunbreak has been greatly improved he can now close the gap between you and him, which he was lacking in low rank. Gorsarag has got a lot of new moves that can instantly cut you if you're unprepared, especially when it comes to his afflicted form. Goss is single-handedly one of the most difficult afflicted monsters to take on, since his new moves are very dangerous. Gossarag is one of the most best fights in Sunbreak. The only thing I don't like is that he didn't get a subspecies or a variant, which is a letdown because a lot of people love Gossarag, so it was a big disappointment that he didn't get a subspecies. Also, his weapons are also still very good, especially in Master Rank. His greatsword is still awesome and it's my go to greatsword in Sunbreak. It might not have the best sharpness but it is one of the strongest weapons in the game. Overall I love Gosharag, he is my second favourite fang beast like I said earlier and this fight is just fun as hell especially with his new attacks and he is hands down one of the best afflicted monsters to fight especially at level 100 and on that note we will move on to number 4. Goran Golem, one of the three lords of the Citadel and he is my most favourite fanged beast in the series. Goran Golem's design is honestly one of my favourites since it is based on Frankenstein. Goran Golem's fight is one of the best fights in Sunbreak since he is the most different out of the three lords. Garen Golem's ecology is very interesting since he has plant life growing inside his body. Out of the three lords, Garen Golem is the most friendly, even though he can be very aggressive when he's threatened. His moveset is quite unique to him compared to the rest of the fanged beasts. Garen Golem has got more than one phase to his fight. When he reaches a certain point, like 20% health. He goes into his final phase where his form changes, where his features change such as his head which more aligns with Frankenstein and he's also got a ultimate move which he does in this phase. This attack can catch you off guard but what he does, he punctures into the ground and then causes a huge explosion. If you're fighting the afflicted version of Gon Garangolem, this is a one shot especially at level 100 and so when it comes to his armor and weapons they are not too bad his weapons are better than Zoma though the only thing is his weapons have got very high blue sharpness and he won't go any higher but they got very high raw overall Garen Golem is hands down one of the best fights in Sunbreak and he is just such an awesome monster. 
and I hope that Garen Golem returns in a future game after some break. He is single handedly my most favourite fanged beast in the series. And on that note, let's move on to number 3. Espinus, the Ford Wyvern, and the flagship of Frontier. Espinus is the first monster ever to cross over from Frontier into a mainstream monster game. With Espinus being in Sunbreak, it opens up the gates for more Frontier monsters to be added. And I have never played Frontier, so Sunbreak was the chance for me to fight Espinus for the first time. And I gotta say, he is hands down one of the most coolest looking monsters and also one of the most best fights in Sunbreak. His moveset is very unique compared to other flying wyverns. He borrows some of his moves from Diablos and also has a very unique fire breath which gives you fire blight, poison and also paralysis. And he is the only monster in the series so far that has all three blights. His fire breath is very deadly, since you can be paralysed 100% of the time. And he will follow up on you. His moveset is very aggressive, so you have to stay on your toes for this fight. Also, Espinus has probably got one of the most best armour skills in the whole game which is called Foray. Foray is a skill that gives you an attack boost when a monster is poisoned, which makes poison weapons really strong in some break. Also with update 2 we got Afflicted Espinus, which is also just as fun, but it can be difficult at times. And also his subspecies was added as well, Flaming Espinus. But honestly, I prefer the original Espinus over Flaming. I find regular Espinus way more fun. And also way more aggressive. Overall, Espinus is just an awesome monster. I love his design and also love his weapons and armor. Mostly because of 4A. But with Espinus being in Sunbreak, Hopefully more Frontier monsters will be added, since we literally just got Flaming Espinus. Also Espinus's theme sounds really good as well. It sounds like you're um, fighting a massive threat, which um, Espinus is, because Espinus can steamroll you if you're not careful. And on that note, we will move on to number 2. Astalos, one of the flagships of Generations. Astalos was my most favourite flying wyvern, but now he is my second favourite flying wyvern in Sunbreak. This Astalos has borrowed a lot of moves from its deviant, Bolt Reaver Astalos. And Bolt Reaver is my favourite deviant in the series, so I'm happy that this Astalos has a lot of its moves, except for its plasma ball. Astalos and Bolt Reaver Astalos are among my favourite monsters in the whole series. He has been on multiple of my monster lists. Astalos is my favourite afflicted monster to farm for dire scales. He is hands down the best afflicted monster in my opinion. Also, this theme has been remade for some break, but honestly I still prefer the original version. Astalos has always been a fun monster to fight, 
and in Sunbreak he is hands down one of the most fun monsters to take on, especially in anomaly quests. I also like that they changed Arcelos' charge state, instead of being a green it is now a yellow. When Arcelos is fully charged and his limbs become yellow, when they are yellow they are more weak to element damage. When he is not charged his elements of values are quite crap. So when you're fighting Astalos, you're best off using raw over element. Overall, I like what they've done with Astalos. They've really improved him over Gemish's ultimate. And they made it more difficult for you to use element on him since only his glowing parts are weak to element when he's fully charged. And also, he is still one of his best fights. But I'm hoping in one update we can get Bolt Reaver Astalos. Because I want to see what they'll do for Bolt Reaver, because Bolt Reaver needs to come back. So Astalos is number two. But before we go to number one, we've got some honorable mentions. Risen Camilios. He was going to be on this list, but I decided to replace him with Espinus, hence why he is here. But I still love Camilios, he is easily in my top 15. Violet Mizutsune is a cool rare species, but unfortunately she is not in my top 10 favourites, and I've only killed her once. Hence why she's here. Flaming Espinus is a unique subspecies, but unfortunately, I don't find him as fun as regular Aspen has. Hence why he is an honorable mention. And so, let's move on to number one. Lucent Nagakuga is my most favourite monster from Sunbreak. He was first introduced in Free Ultimate and he hasn't been seen in any of the monsters the game until Sunbreak. Lucent Nagakuga is very similar to regular Nagakuga except it can do poison damage and also turn invisible which makes his rare species really unique. For anyone who has followed me for a while, you should know that I really adore Nagakuga. And I gotta say, Lucent Nagakuga is my most favourite version of Nagakuga. And he is now my most favourite monster in Sunbreak. I really love his design and his fight. They really have updated him since he hasn't been seen since Free Ultimate. Lucent Nagakuga's moveset is very different from regular Nagakuga. He can dislodge poison bobs from his tail. He can also form poison clouds that surround his body. Also, this Nagakuga has a double tail slam, which can be deadly. And also a new ultimate attack, where it will go invisible and then do a massive tail slam which can cart you. Also, Lizard Nagakuga brought something interesting to the table when it comes to his weapons and also his armour. His armour has got two new skills which are very good, which is Sneak Attack and also Adrenaline Rush. 
Sneak attack is an interesting skill because you gain an attack boost when you attack a monster from behind or when it's sleeping. Also, Adrenaline Rush, you get a short attack boost if you successfully evade an attack, which is very good on certain weapons, such as Switch Axe for example. His weapons are quite decent, but they got very low sharpness, but they look awesome. And they are, I guess, a good alternative for poison weapons, but they also have good slots. So it really depends on your preference. Overall, Lucent Nagakuga is my most favourite rare species in Sunbreak, and also my most favourite flying wyvern. So I'm kinda glad that Lucent Nagakuga returned. Because he's a monster that I've never fought before until now. And I gotta say, they really made him a good fight in Sunbreak. And I hope he comes back in future games. So these are my top 10 monsters from Sunbreak. This video took a very long time to make since I am currently working full time. And I had to put the list on hold because we only just got update 2 and we're getting the next update in November so the list might change depending what new monsters come along and also I might be making another monster list for some break maybe a top 15 or top 20 it really depends how I feel so until then I will catch you guys at the next video, thank you all for watching and of course happy hunting!